Hello there Scorpios, welcome to your tarot reading. When I was meditating on this reading for you, I saw two things. And uh, the first is, I see this, uh, this man, he's, he's quite young, probably, you know, a teenager, like probably on the older spe age spectrum, like around 18, 19 years old. He's, uh, t he's like a farm hand, okay? They hire him to kind of um, uh, put the horseshoes on the horse, um, clip the nails or the, the hooves of, his, um, of cows, sheep, and, and horses. So he's like a farm hand. He's very skilled. They hire him to specifically take care of those responsibilities. So I see him sitting down on a stool in a stable and his owner or somebody is outside and they're telling him like oh you're doing it wrong you should do this instead of that and he's like okay okay and then he goes back to his stool and he he takes care of the animals the way that he was trained to do and the way that he knows how and so what i feel immediately is i'm, I'm sensing that you know there's there's you've either got like a backseat driver who's telling you how to do your job or who's telling you what you should do based on their assessment of what you should do. They might have very, very little skills or expertise or knowledge in the area that you are trained to do, and yet they feel the need to kind of interfere with your work and your independence, pretty much. Um, I'm getting a little bit of a nagging, annoying type of a energy around you. This could be coming in from, you know, other people who are kind of um, infringing upon your right to do things your way, or they are overstepping their boundaries when it comes to telling you what they think you should do. And this can also extend outwards to other people in their lives as well, where they feel like they need to chime in, they need to give their two cents, even though they might not have even though they might not have um, an idea, even though they might not have the skills and the expertise to back up whatever it is that they're saying, okay? So I, I definitely feel this almost like a, a micromanager or somebody looking over your shoulders, making sure that you're, you're doing things the way they want. And it can be very, very aggravating for, um, for you guys, okay? Um, if this is like a boss, and I'm seeing it very well could be a boss, a supervisor, a manager, a higher up that is um, doing this to not only you, but a lot of other people around your environment. And I want you to understand as well and not take this so personally. They are a source of annoyance, but they're not targeting you. They're not singling you out. They're not doing this only to you. They're doing this to everybody in their environment. And so it has everything to do with their own trust issues and their own hangups. And it has nothing to do with your performance and your capabilities. So I want you to just keep that in mind. Okay. On the contrary, the other image that I saw was, um, I see this little boy, he's like four or five and he's got a new bike. And um, it's sparkly, it's nice and, you know, shiny. And it has like, uh, it makes noise. So it has like uh, gadgets and things on, on the bike. It's a kid's bike, you know. Um, and it makes noise. And he's so excited about this bike. So he takes it around the neighborhood. And his friends, you know, his little kid friends, they live like uh, in a little cul-de-sac. So he drives by and then his friends aren't out. And he really wants to show off his bike and or at least... Tell his friends, you know, I've got this bike here. And so he goes around, circles around a few more times. And then he honks the horn or the he makes a little noise on the little gadgets on the bike. And then his friends come out and they all marvel at his bike. And then he's just like, if you guys want to ride it, you're more than welcome. So I, I feel like, you know, children in general tend to be a little bit more possessive when it comes to their their things, okay? Their toys, especially a brand new toy, people tend to get possessive. And especially when it comes to children uh, under the age of 10, when they're a little bit more like um, a little bit less aware of other people. And so the fact that this little boy is sharing his uh, his new bike or telling, you know, others that you're more than welcome to ride the bike or, you know, if you choose to 
uh, use the bike, um, it shows a lot of generosity. It shows a lot of kindness and generosity. And I feel like a level of maturation that is um, really good for a kid his age. And so I feel for many of you, um, you might have already been, you know, um, put in many positions where you had to share your belongings, your possessions. You might be, for example, um, and, and I know this is weird, but I, I feel like you might be the, the oldest child and um, you've had to share your, you know, every time there's a new child that comes into a household, the oldest child gets less attention, right, naturally. And they have to start taking care of their little siblings and they might have to start taking care of the people around them. So I feel like you're used to having to give part of your time, part of your energy, part of your toys to the younger siblings. And so you have this mentality of generosity and kindness. And especially when you're dealing with people that are younger than you or people that are less fortunate, you naturally, your generosity kicks up, you step up and you basically give out, give your, your energy, your time in order to make the other person feel better. Okay. So there's definitely that spirit of generosity and then I'm also feeling as well, some of you, and, and this is where I feel like it's a little bit weird. Some of you might be um, the only child where, you know, um, parents have doted on you. OK, so like I'm seeing a lot of people that potentially could be the only child in a family where mom and dad might not live together. They might be separated. They might be divorced. And so you're getting a lot of toys from both parents. OK, you're getting a lot of time, a lot of attention from both parents. And uh, as a result of that, you have like, um, you, you feel almost like this, this endless stream of toys and, and generosity and trinkets that are always going to be in the picture for you. And so it doesn't give you anxiety to have to part with your toys. And you also are aware of how fortunate you are. And so you're able to give more of yourself or your resources or your possessions to other people and not have to fear that more isn't coming, more abundance isn't coming, more gifts, more trinkets are kind of like in the pipelines ready to come in for you. And so you, you part with your possessions and with your things in a very, um, in a very willing way, I feel. So it doesn't give you a lot of anxiety to have to share yourself or your resources. So that's, that's what I'm sensing. Um, so, you know, those two images are definitely in juxtaposition to one another. And what that usually denotes to me is um, I feel like when it comes to your own personal agenda, if you're left to your devices, everything will work out the way that you want. OK, you know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You guys have a very good sense of wow very good card. Okay. You guys have a very good sense about your capabilities and what you need to work on and what you're really good at. Okay. Um, I feel like a lot of the later signs, okay. The, a lot of the later signs, like, you know, from, um, Virgo moving forward, Virgo until like the end, which is, um, Pisces, a lot of the later signs tend to be a little bit more introspective. Okay. So, um, they're, they're, they're older signs, I would say. And as a result of being the older signs, they embody all the good and all the bad traits of all the previous signs. And because of their introspection, they're able to see, they're, they're able to understand themselves a little bit more. They have a little bit more self-awareness. And I feel like out of all the water signs, you yourself, you, you're a fixed sign. So you have very strong likes and dislikes. You know exactly who you are. And even if, for example, no matter what happens around you, if you're around good people, if you're around bad people, if uh, there's chaos around you, you are able to maintain your center of gravity. So that means you don't, you don't change with the tides, okay? You have a very clear and solid sense of who you are at all times. So hanging around with bad people doesn't turn you bad. And this is something that's very true of fixed signs. We know who we are. We know what we're capable of. We have our own sense of ethics and morality, even from a very, very young age. And so when we hang around bad people, they don't influence us to be bad. 
We don't really succumb to peer pressure because we know who we are. We don't need to do anything to get other people to validate us or to get other people to accept us. And I feel like this is what I mean with this spread, okay? Uh, you're aware of your capabilities, of your strengths, and of what you need to work on. And it's really could be very aggravating when other people tell you what to do, okay? Um, with Aquarius, for example, the other uh, fixed sign, they hate being told what to do. And there's an Aquarius presence here. So these are like the, the, the true mavericks, the, um, you know, screw the, the, the system, screw the, um, the rigidity. So they, 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 they don't really succumb to, you know, structures, rules, and people telling them what to do. And I almost feel like you might be taking on more of that Aquarian trait, okay? You're right under the star, which is all about enlightenment and independence, okay? Being self-sufficient, okay? And it's like doing your own thing and not really caring about what other people say, what other per how other people perceive you, and what other people expect from you. And I feel like that's what's happening here. And it's like, come what may, I'm going to stand my ground I'm, I, and I'm going to stand in a very solid way. Okay. So what you're looking at here is this giant wave that's coming towards you. It's carrying the ship towards you. And you're on a, um, a throne that is made from rock. Okay. But you're not sinking. So what I feel here is you are anticipating a very very bright future with the star card healing inspiration brightness and it's also about um finding your true path okay it, this is like the the destiny so i feel like you many of you have a very very clear solid um vision of what your future is supposed to look like and you know what you're supposed to do you know where you're supposed to go and then as a result of that you only listen to your inner voice, your inner guidance. And so no matter what's happening around you, you don't really give it any mind, okay? If there are bad elements around you, Seven of Swords indicates sneaky behavior, lying, cheating, deceitful energy. If this energy is around you, it doesn't really phase you. You have really keen insights into human characters as well, human motives, as well as, you know, um, when someone comes to you and they have ulterior motives, you can smell it a mile away. If somebody is telling you something and their actions contradict whatever they're telling you, you can sniff it out. You, you catch hold of all of these inconsistencies in their stories, in the way they behave. And if someone comes at you and they pretend to be nice when they in fact want something from you, you know, you have this innate sense of deep knowing when somebody is not being 100% truthful with you. And I feel like, you know, they can carry on with the charade. But sooner or later, I, I just feel like you're not going to confront them. You're not going to tell them like, you know, oh, I'm done with you. I feel like you could just exit the picture without really giving, uh, giving them an explanation. A lot of the signs that have been involved with Scorpios, they uh, do complain that you guys are secretive and you guys go into a habit of like um, ghosting people, just disappearing without a trace. And I feel like what that denotes is you understand what people's intentions are. You understand what people are up to. And when they're up to no good and they're not very upfront and honest about it, you don't even need to confront them. You don't even need to like have a conversation with them about their behavior. You just automatically, you know, cut the ties and ghost them and just uh, disappear from their life because to you is really not worth it. But what I'm feeling here is despite of whoever, whatever company you keep, they might be dubious company. They don't really influence you, once again, because you have that really strong sense of self. And the reason I bring this up is I feel almost like there has been, you know, the, the life of a Scorpio is very, very um, transformative, okay? Um, Scorpio people have really deep karmic lessons that they have to learn. And you can be any in any age bracket watching this. 
but what I'm feeling is you're not really aware of your true power or one is not really aware of their true power until they have been through a lot of trials and adversity. When we're put in a very, very tight situation, that's when we have to respond from a, a fight or flight type of, uh, you know, instinct. And I feel for many of you, you have never, um, I want to say coward in front of other people. When put in a situation where you have to defend others that you love or you have to defend yourself, you don't run away from conflict, okay? You don't run away and with, you know, your tails between your legs. You don't um, try to say whatever the other person wants to hear just to appease them, just to de-escalate uh, de the conflict. You stand your ground. And because of that, you know, a lot of the times the, the truth sayer are the ones that are not very, very popular, right? The people that have the wisdom and the insights and often the, they, they see the situation for what it is. A lot of the times they are, they find themselves like burned at the stake, okay? Because the world is just not ready for the truth. And so what I'm feeling is in the past, you might have put your neck out there. And you might have said some very, very unpopular truths that people were not ready to hear. It's almost like you were ahead of your time. You said things and did things that people were not ready for. And you found yourself in a situation where you're just like, I'm just speaking my truth. But it's not very well received. And rightfully so. Because the people that you were dealing with or you had around you were not ready to face these truths. And they were not ready for the brutal honesty. And as a result of that, you might have felt, you know, relationships and friendships and even family relationships drifting away because they couldn't really handle the truth. They couldn't really handle uh, the strength in which you stood your ground because they were following the herd while you were following your own intuition. And these relationships, these friendships gradually had to, you know, um, fall away. And you might have found yourself in this space where you're just like, I'm doing the right thing, but why is the right thing the unpopular thing? Why am I find, finding myself it's like, you know, not having an abundance of people and good company around me? And I feel it's almost like the life of the Scorpio is has a lot to do with being able to not define your own sense of self-worth by whether or not other people around you accept you, okay? So it's sort of like walking your own truth. Do your own thing. Be financially, emotionally independent of other people. Have your own resources. Have your own bank account. Have your own financial freedom where you can do whatever you want without needing to, you know... Um, bow to anybody else, needing to do anything based on anybody else's expectations and without having to, you know, um, feel guilty for spending your money however you want and not have to be financially linked up with another person. So it's a lot more about being, you know, very, very independent. Okay. Um, for many of you, there might've been a lot of financial hardships in the past and you're coming to the realization too that you need to be better when it comes to your financial resources, saving up for a rainy day, uh, saving up for unexpected expenditures, making your money grow for you, investing your money and not squandering your money. Um, I remember it was like in 2015, the end of 2015. Yeah, the end of 2015, where there was this massive situation in your life where you start to realize that, you know, all the things that shimmered, all the, the things that glitter were not gold. You came to the realization that, you know, um, there are people who are truly golden. And then there are people who were like fool's gold, you know, the pyrite. They shimmer, they talk big, but at the end of the day, when the pressure is on, they buckle. Okay. They follow the herd. They took the path of least resistance. And 
I feel like you saw their human flaws. And I, I feel like these were people that you really, really, really respected. And these were the people that you had high hopes that were going to be in your life for a really long time in whatever capacity. And I feel almost like they fell from their pedestal. And then I also feel like for many of you, like that they either fall, fell from their pedestal or you placed the wrong people on the pedestal and reality, you know, came to light in that end of 2015. And you started to realize that you were placing the wrong emphasis on the wrong, the, the, your emphasis was placed on the wrong things, okay? And so you have spent the past three years, I feel, building up, okay, building up your self-esteem. This is greatly, I don't feel like it's financial resources. It's mainly building up your self-esteem. There was that rock bottom and now we're climbing up, okay, climbing back on top. And from this five of pentacles, this is like feeling cast out, feeling like burn at the stake, feeling like you put yourself out there. And there was this moment where you felt very, very dejected, like people didn't appreciate you or you were not appreciated and you were not, um, people did not appreciate you and see your true worth and your true potential. And so you bury yourself in work. You bury yourself in work. And, you know, there is a lot of, um, I feel like, resentment. You could have retaliated, okay? You could have retaliated. You could have slandered the other person. You could have, you know, um, I, I feel almost like this sense of retaliation that you might have done in the past, you turn your back on it. And you're just like, you know, they're going to get what's due to them. They're going to get their justice one way or another. I'm not going to get my hands dirty. And especially, I'm not going to stoop to this level. Because I feel like you're, you're turning your back on a lot of things and a lot of people that no longer matter to you. And you're focusing on yourself and building up your self-esteem, building up your financial resources. And especially learning to be more independent, okay? I don't need other people anymore. I'm at a point where I don't need their presence to val validate my self-esteem or my existence and so it was an uphill climb i do see there was a lot of tension that you overcame 2015 and then moving towards 2018 you're in a much better financial situation you're generating wealth you're working consistently you found work that is meaningful and you're keeping yourself very very busy in a very healthy way and I also feel like, you know, from the 2017 time frame, all of these cards are dictating to me years from the 2017 time frame. Somebody from your past that did a number on you back in 2015 tried to come back into the picture, okay? They brought with them guilt trips. They got brought with them like, you know, um, like a half-hearted attempt at reconnecting, recommunicating, um, trying to, you know, catch your attention, trying to get your attention. Um, all they, all they should have done was, I'm really sorry, I messed up, but they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They went about it their way to get your attention. And I feel like that was when, you know, the truth came to light and you realize I'm letting it go. I'm moving forward. Okay. And why am I bringing this up? Why is this showing up so prominently in, in this, this spread, especially for this year? Pisces is, um, you know, it's the time of Pisces in the March 2019 time frame. And Pisces is a fellow water sign. It's also the, the, the last sign of the water signs. And what that means is taking all of our emotional karma, all of the lessons, emotional lessons that we've learned from the past and really marinating in it letting it kind of sink in so that we can figure out what we need to do so that we can do some purging so that we can move forward so that we can heal from these things i feel like the past three years for you guys it, it was just not like a, it wasn't like a walk in the park it was very very difficult you've had to overcome a lot of things and you've had to do a lot to rebuild your self-confidence 
more than anything. Rebuild your bank account. Rebuild your self-confidence. And I'm also feel like, I also feel like the past six months, there was something hinging. There was like a, a long period of suspension. What is my financial future going to look like? And that was something that really plagued you with worries and anxiety for the past six months. You've come out of it. And now things are looking really very, very bright. Okay. Very bright, very hopeful. Things are looking as well, very stable. It's going to stand the test of time. So if you've been worried about some new venture or endeavor you've undertaken for the past six months and you're just like, uh, is it going to stick? Is it going to be wobbly like this? Is it going to get better? It is better. And the, I, I feel like you're getting some type of a confirmation here that you're on the right path. That things right now, nine of cups, and the star. Both of these are wish cards, okay? Wish fulfillment. Whatever worries you've had, you have moved away from it. And now we're on to this phase where we are beginning to heal and we are being beginning to pull towards us all the things that we have dreamt about, all the things that we've wished we had, and all the things that are actually really good for us. So we're shedding some old patterns, some patterns in relationships. For those of you who have been single for a very long time, and I do see this as, you know, Nine of Pentacles, this is a singles card for a, a very long period of time. And many of you have thought about, you know, that soulmate connection, okay? That past life connection, that soulmate connection, that karmic connection even. You have shed those karmic past life connection. And you're longing for a reunion here with the soulmate. And you're wondering, why is it taking so long? I've been single for a really long time. Why are all of my friends getting married and getting hitched and getting engaged and, you know, having children and settling down in really stable relationships or even having a lot of breakthroughs when it comes to fi their finances and their career? Why am I in this state of flux? Why am I still waiting? And I feel like, you know, it, it takes a little bit more time. You're letting go of the very last remnants of the past in order to move away from it. Many of you are going to be um, able, so I'm getting this nine here, 2019. Many of you are going to be able to get into a very, very solid relationship where the other person is going to work at it with you, okay? And learning from the past, you're going to realize that Let's not link up our finances. Let, let's have separate bank accounts. Let's just do that for a few months or a few years before we linked up our, our assets. You're learning from the past and you're realizing that you can't really, you know, be careless anymore because something quite destructive happened financially in a very past, like um, in, in a past karmic type of a relationship that left you in a dark dark place um and i feel a lot of it has to do with this um this f and excuse me for the word but this very naive totally giving energy where you were given to the wrong person and they took and took and took okay they took and took and took and you ended up with very little left for yourself at the end of that relationship. Sorry about that, Scorpio. The video cut out. Um, so I feel like, you know, this reading is a lot more about going down memory lane, taking a trip through memory lane through the past to examine where we've been and where we need to go. OK, so I mentioned a lot about, you know, what happened in the previous years and how that has really changed you it has really um helped you kind of like ground yourself to realize who you are to realize how you handled adversity and just difficult situations in your life for you to realize just how strong how capable and how independent you are and having that knowledge in mind i definitely feel like many of you have come into your own sense of power into your own sense of you know i'd rather be by myself take care of myself than be in potentially bad, toxic, idealistic, or even, you know, naive types of relationships, okay? And you have also realized how much your generosity 
in the past has really like blinded generosity. It's like that kid with the new bike. He's going to uh, let all his friends ride the bike. And it's like, it's something that, that he earned. It's something that's very dear and sacred to him. And yet I feel like you're coming into this sense of, you know, I need to be a little bit more careful about my generosity, about taking care of myself and especially about not depriving myself of things when things that I really want or things that I really need. So you're drawing your energy inwards to really take care of yourself, to kind of smooth out the wrinkles in areas of your life that you feel needs a little bit more tweaking, okay? And a lot of it is work and finances, and it's about building up your financial resources so that you can have a more stable financial future. You're rebuilding. After whatever happened in 2015, you are really, really trying to rebuild. After whatever happened, you know, six months ago, you're really, really trying to rebuild and you're starting to realize that I can't coast anymore. I need to have a nest egg. I need to save up, like I have an emergency funds and things like that. So moving forward into the month of um, March, I feel like this is a very, very potent and beautiful energy where you're getting your, your financial situation very very stabilized and situated okay this is a card about institution it is about things that are very uh, grounded very secure it has a really good foundation it has a solid structure and because of that it's going to stand the test of time but at the same time we can't really sit back and coast we have to put in the work in order to get the benefits out of it okay and I see you working very very diligently possibly with another person they're good at one thing you're good at another you complement each other very well you could very well be you know managing different aspects of a business of a work situation where you feel like you're not in it alone there's another person there with you but the the uh, each person is doing their main thing or doing what they're good at and so there isn't that sense of codependence okay it's like we're both doing our own thing I do mine you do your part and at the end of the day we turn in our work individually. So what they do doesn't really affect your performance or the overall outcome for the two of you as a unit. Um, so what I have here for this month is a lot of blessings that are going to be coming through. And it's coming through because you are a lot more secure and grounded and, and true in your own capabilities, okay? You have restored your, your sense of faith in yourself relationships are really going to stabilize and like I said you might be dealing with someone who's very very independent okay I do my thing you do yours and it works mainly because both people because you're a fixed sign like I mentioned you know who you are and I feel like you can do your own thing and then come back to this person and bring your best to them and they likewise will do the same for you and then I also see, you know, the, the two wish card here, which indicates to me things are looking really, really bright. You're very hopeful for your financial future in the, um, in the upcoming months. And you're also very hopeful as well when it comes to your social life, when it comes to having the people that mean a lot to you around you. Okay. So this is going to prove to be a very rewarding month where hard work really pays off. For all of us diligent signs out there, you know, sometimes we lose sight because we are so caught up in the daily grind and we don't really see the big picture. But what I'm seeing here is all of these little tiny details that you're working on, it is panning out in a really beautiful way. And the big picture is starting to, you know, fill itself in and it's looking very hopeful and very bright. I do see there is a soulmate type of a connection in your environment and you're possibly dealing with someone who is extremely independent. They are self-sufficient. They are self-made. Okay. The six of cups here is a really strong soul connection with another person where you feel like you could really grow old with this person, build a life together. And I feel like, you know, they're the, the main thing is they're so independent that they might not see the need for a relationship. And that's actually one of the most um, powerful indicator of a really good relationship partner or a really good relationship. It's when two people are doing their own thing and self-sufficient and independent and have their own financial resources that they don't have to rely on one another. And in hard times, one person's income can shoulder the responsibilities in the relationship if one person, God forbid, if one person loses their job or is in between jobs or chooses to 
to leave their jobs and find something else. The, the financial weight of the relationship won't break the relationship because both parties are self-sufficient, okay? So we have that here. You're dealing with someone who's very, very independent. And I also feel like, you know, in a way, their independence is very overriding. So it might make you feel like you have to, you know, really catch up to your partner or whoever it is that you're interested in in order to be able to give them uh, what you feel is deserving of them or what you feel they really, really deserve. So you're kind of like catching up here. I see this element of catch up. This could be the other person and this could be you. Nine of Pentacles and you at the Eight of Pentacles, almost there, a little bit like right on their heels and you're catching up just so that you can, at the end of the day, say that, you know, I'm bringing my best to this person. I'm bringing my best to this situation or I'm making myself a better person so that I can attract, you know, like people into my life, okay? Um, career, money, finances, all of that looks really, really good. And I feel like just the bottom line is you're very, very hopeful for all the things that are coming that these waves are bringing in, okay? It's a wave of change. It's not scary. I feel like, you know, the, 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 the waves rocks the boat elevates it to a higher standing so that's what I feel is happening in your professional life and that's what I feel is happening in your financial situation as well so I hope the reading is helpful for you guys uh, there were a lot of energies from previous years but I feel like they're coming in to show you where you've been and what you need to focus on right now and not to doubt yourself and not to doubt your capabilities not to doubt your strength not to doubt that you have overcome a lot of adversity and it